Watch this full video if you want to learn how to perform in Austin during South by Southwest without being taken advantage of by janky promoters and scammers. Okay, so first let me apologize for the quality of this video. I'm not a YouTuber. This is just something I put together because around this time we get a lot of questions, a lot of people who are trying to perform during South by Southwest. We end up going over the same things a lot of times, so I decided let me put all this information together, throw it up on YouTube, and try to help as many people get the information that they need to avoid being taken advantage of. With that being said, the number one reason a lot of people get taken advantage of when it comes to going down to Austin for South by Southwest and trying to perform is a lack of information. There are a lot of people who are looking to perform in Austin during South by Southwest, and the closest that they've actually come to the festival is the hashtag. With that being said, a lot of them have the wrong idea of what the music festival actually is. They hear music festival and they're thinking Coachella, Rolling Loud. They're picturing a huge field with like a main stage and maybe a few other side stages. That And that's not the way South by Southwest is set up. It's actually something very unique. It's the largest festival of its kind. It's not just music. They have the interactive portion of film, the gaming. It's a lot of different things. But if we just focus on the music portion of it, it's in downtown Austin, Texas. This is a metropolitan area. So it's not just a big field anywhere. They have the conference center where a lot of the, the panels and different stuff related to the industry is going on. And then maybe one block over, you have 6th Street, which is the main strip. It's blocked off for, for blocks. And it's dozens and dozens of bars and music halls and concert venues on either side of the street. What what makes this so unique is because it's not a one big stage, it's not a hip hop festival or a pop festival or EDM festival, because there's so many different venues and different events going on, official events, um, that it allows the festival to cater to all types of music. So you'll have hip hop shows, you'll have gospel shows, bluegrass, country, like whatever. It's like, it's, it, and, and it's, I, I, I really encourage any independent artist, if you really love music and you're looking to network with different people, something that you should attend whether or not you perform it, even though I know that's what most of you care about. And since that's what most of you care about, let's just jump into that. For you to actually perform officially with South by Southwest, you have to submit your music through their website and you have to submit it early. I believe the fee is like $55 to submit your music and they go over everything, they review it and they pick out acts to perform on the various showcases that they set up. Here are the benefits, performing officially, it's only $55 to submit. If you're selected, there is no fee to perform. I believe they pay uh, $250 if selected, or they give you the option of a uh, $250 payment or badges um, to get into the conference and all of the stuff, which take the badges. You're going to get way more value out of them. But they do not cover your travel expenses of coming down to Austin for South by Southwest if you get selected and you're booked. That's on you. But I do believe that they still do like preferential treatment, like for the people that they have been selected to perform, um, you have access to their system to book with the hotels and some of the lodging that they partner with. It's still going to cost you some money, though. In and of itself, just being booked to perform officially with South by Southwest is just an accolade. Like it's something that's that's an accomplishment and something you should be proud of. Um, but then you're also going to be on the website with a lot of other people. You're going to be in the app. And so people will be able to discover you and discover your brand and discover your music. And it'll go a long way toward helping you possibly book other shows and stuff, um, especially if you do a really good job on your performance, which I assume that you should do a decent job at your performance since you got picked. Now, here's the con to all of this. Because it's so open, you have thousands and thousands of people from all over the globe who are submitting for an opportunity to perform at this festival, which means that they have to close submissions early enough for them to go through everybody's music and select the people that they're going to book. And then also let them know uh, far enough ahead of time that they can make their travel arrangement. And remember that this is open internationally. So you have people who are coming from Africa, the UK, from all over the place. With that being said, submissions close, I believe, in August. I believe this past year they extended it out to September. What that means is if you're watching this video right now and it's November, December, January, February, you're thinking about this South by Southwest that's coming up and you're not about to perform on an official stage 
this late in the game if you're trying to go through the proper process of doing submission. That doesn't mean you can't perform in Austin during South by Southwest. Now, what I've been talking to you about are the official shows, the, the shows that are sanctioned by South by Southwest. They have the South by Southwest logo on them. They'll be listed on the website. The performers will be listed on the website. But there are a lot of events that are unofficial events that are still down on 6th Street in the heart of everything where there are tens of thousands of people moving around. Now, I know you hear the term unofficial and you're like, why would I want to perform on an unofficial stage? Because you're not performing on the official stage. <laughs> like, you, you missed the boat on that. But the unofficial stages offer a great alternative for someone if you have a budget and you know like, hey, I want to go down there. I'm looking for promotional shows. Now, this is where we get into a great area of this whole pay to play concept. As someone who does marketing and promotion and do events and work with artists and try to help artists, if you're paying just to play music, that's ridiculous and it doesn't make sense. But if you're paying to present your music to an audience, to potential fans, to potential people to network with, to potential managers and producers, then that's when it makes sense. So here's where we're at. You've already missed the submission deadline to actually perform on an official event during South by Southwest, but you still want to go to Austin. You want to perform down there. You want to take advantage of all of these people in the music industry, all of these music fans, tens of thousands of people that are going to be here in this place. You have unofficial events where they offer an opportunity for you to perform. Now, let's dig into that. When you hear unofficial you're probably like, ah, why would I want to perform an unofficial event? Well, unofficial events have their merit. As an artist, they're basically no different than running an ad during the Super Bowl. You're paying for a platform to get exposure on, and they're going to charge you to perform. Your chances of not getting charged are slim to none. Uh, but here's the reason, the reason why they charge, because they pay for venues, they pay for headline and talent, they pay to promote the event. They do a lot of things to make sure that there are people in the event. The legit shows do that. Now, you got some some not legit shows where they just get a venue or they don't even get a venue and they just take money from unsuspecting independent artists making them promises of shows that don't come together or telling them how great a show is going to be, but not doing putting in any of the lead work to actually promote it to make it a great show. I've seen that happen way too many times. That's the reason why I'm doing this video. Here's the other thing that you got to consider for the unofficial shows. You have tens of thousands of people who are in Austin for South by Southwest, and many of them don't have $800 to $1,300. So they're in Austin to have a good time because there are tons of people there but they don't have a badge. So the unofficial shows offer alternative programming for people who are in town for the festival who can't go to the official events. Um, a lot of unofficial shows also let people in for free. So you're going to have a good mixture of actual consumers as well as people who do music, booking agents, that type of thing. A big issue with the unofficial shows is it's hard to tell the legit ones from the janky promoters the con artists who are just trying to have you wire them some money because you have this issue with people not being able to tell which is which uh, for the past five or six years, we've been, we provide assistance to independent artists looking to book promotional shows in Austin during South by Southwest through our contacts and our relationships with various promoters and brands um, that do unofficial shows in Austin during South by Southwest. We vet the shows and we make sure it's a good situation. What The way that we have it set up, independent artists can come to our website, submit your music, your information. You submit your budget on what you're willing to pay for performances, whether you're looking for as many shows as possible or the biggest show you could possibly get on. Our team reviews your music, finds stages that are fit for your goals, your budget, and your music and basically play matchmaker. We don't charge the independent artists any money for the service. You don't even need a membership on our site to do it. All you have to do is register for a free account and submit your information. Now, for those of you who have a membership on our site, um, every year we do provide opportunities for artists to perform for free in Austin during South by Southwest, even late in the game. Um, the most notable is our Media Matter Soundstage. Uh, which is an event that we've been doing for now five years. Every year we bring out over 100 
bloggers, radio shows, podcasts, and media industry professionals to check out new talent and network. We put over $20,000 into this event, and we don't charge a single artist to perform to get on this stage. Um, Members submit music through our site. Um, We pick 15 acts to perform for free, and we help up to five of them with their travel expenses. Even when that opportunity wraps up, we do partner with other stages to sponsor performance opportunities that we think would be a good fit or a good look for our members. The biggest detractor to performing on a lot of the unofficial stages is the price point that you're going to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to perform on the stage, depending on the size of the stage and the venue and the prominence of it. Because it's easy to think I wouldn't have to pay if I did the official stage. Well, you also had to submit and get selected. So if you're doing an unofficial stage, you're not spending any money um, unless it's a guaranteed performance opportunity, as long as you're dealing with a solid company. Another benefit of actually performing on the unofficial events is the fact that you do have control. And that kind of balances out the fact that you actually have to pay for it um, is the fact that you can choose uh, an event that matches your brand. Um, And you can choose an event that's at a specific type of venue and you have options as far as your set length. And so it it gives you a lot more control on finding the platform that's best suited for what your goals are when you go to perform during South by Southwest. If you ask me how to make the most out of South by Southwest, performing would be at the bottom of my list. Uh, The first thing I would tell any independent artist to do is to actually register for the conference or the festival because in addition to the the events and the music it's just like so much great information on the panels um the different tracks that they put together the keynote speakers that are going to give you an understanding of the music industry the business and trends it's a million dollars worth of game that they're giving out well not giving out but once you're registered it's free. Like, get all the information that you can. So I would definitely say registering for the actual conference would be at the top of my list if you want to make the most of South by Southwest. Now, if you don't have 800 to $1,300 to register for the conference and then also pay for travel and lodging to get down there and to miss work for a full week, I understand. For whatever time that you're down there, I would tell you to network, 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 whether you're at an official event or an unofficial event or in the middle of damn 6th street and you're just bumping into people ask people who they are what do they do introduce yourself um exchange contact information follow up with people if you're an artist network with artists from other markets um you can set up your own shows you can do feature work back and forth it's a lot of great opportunities um promote uh, make sure that you go down, go down there with something, flyers, CD, jump drives, wristbands, T-shirts, whatever it is. And, and, and when you're networking, I, I, I would just tell, leave people with something. Um, and all of those things, I would say you need to do whether or not you perform. All right. So but if you do go down there to perform, rehearse your performance, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse You're if, especially if you're doing an unofficial stage, you're paying for this platform. And when you get on that platform, you want to deliver. You want to convert the people who are watching you, who are seeing you perform into fans, into advocates. You want them to come up to you and want your music, to ask for your Instagram, to follow you after you perform. You want to convert them. And so um, whether or not... Um, you do anything else. Um, it's still a music festival. There are some other great acts. Enjoy yourself. Now, hopefully all of that information was helpful for you and will help you navigate some of the waters and will help you as much as we can on the different things that we do. We do provide the booking assistance service on our site for free. No membership required. Just create a free account submit your music and your information and we we help find stages um, that you can perform on within your budget Um, we also do our destination atx bus trip for all my people who are in atlanta we take a bus full of artists 
bloggers, DJs, people in the music industry, um, round trip transportation from um, Atlanta to Austin, um, two nights hotel stay, three to four star hotel, um, a guaranteed performance on an event and promo campaign, which includes placement of song on USB drives, f custom flyers, featured an email blast, the whole nine, a lot of good stuff. Then we also have our Media Matter Sound Stage that we do each year, which, um, we, like I said, we bring out over 100 blogs, radio shows, podcasts. Um, we dump a lot of money into doing the event. Um, all of the artists um, perform for free. We do meet and greets with established artists, industry executives, and producers. I'm talking like Grammy Award winning, multi-platinum producers and artists um, that we bring out for the meet and greets. Uh, we do free activation for media. So if you're an up and coming YouTuber, blogger, magazine, radio show, you can submit to become a media partner. We provide activation and promotion for free for the media. It's just an event that we do to try to bring as much of the independent um, infrastructure together that's down there during no badge, no cover. You can come in network with media, do some free interviews, do some drops for some magazines, and, and really make the most of the experience. Um, we also do our Meet the DJs event, which this is our second year doing it. Last year, the first year we did it, we did meet and greets for over 50 club, radio, and mixtape DJs from across the country. Had a great turnout. The event went great. It's going to be even bigger this year, um, but it's a way for um, like a lot of the DJs, instead of them having to run around to all of these different places, we give them a home um, on Friday where we do the meet and greets for them so that all of the artists and people who may be following them on Instagram and haven't had a chance to actually meet them in person can come buy them a drink and build a real relationship. We do a few performances during that event. Um, we got like a lot of special stuff for this year. Then we also have this year we're doing two nighttime stages. We're bringing the wrap up back and we have something special that we're doing on Friday with a special partner that we haven't announced yet. But um, our nighttime events are more parties with performances. It's not a situation where it's just back to back to back to back to back to performances. It's like few people perform. DJ runs a set. We bring in a headliner. It's really about co uh, cultivating the vibe, curating um, the right energy. Um, so those are some of the things that we got going on. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. We, we're doing so much stuff. Okay, so the other thing that I'm forgetting is the USB drives that we're doing. We're doing up 500 USB drives that we'll be passing out to um, DJs, uh, media, industry professionals, and people who are involved in the music industry during South by Southwest. Um, if you're an artist and you have a song that you want to get on the drive, it's $50 to get it on all 500 drives. Um, if you want to get three songs on there, it's a hundred dollars. And that includes it going in a private folder on the drive, uh, with your name and information in the folder name. Um, for all of my producers, we have an option. It's a hundred and fifty dollars and we have a folder for beats and you have your private folder within the beats folder with five tracks, five of your beats, five of your beats. And it'll be encoded with your Instagram name and your phone number. And it's an opportunity for you to get your beats out to artists and managers and people who will be in Austin during South by Southwest. We did the same thing for A3C and all of the producers that I've spoken with who got on the drive. So beats. So it works. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much like all the information I really just have for you guys. Um, regarding South by Southwest and making the most of it as independent artists going down there on a budget. Um, if there if there's anything else that I think of, uh, you know, I'll post it on Instagram more than likely. That's where I just put up quick stuff. But if you like this video and you would like more videos like this, where someone gives you like actual real information on the music industry and how to navigate it, Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, um, give me some topics that y'all want, want me to talk about or questions that you may have, and I'll try my best to um, provide you guys with some solid, 
honest information. I uh, appreciate everybody for checking in. Um, maybe I'm going to actually get a camera and start editing this stuff. <laughs> Kelby Cannon, publisher of Making a Magazine. I'm out.